In this video, we're going to take a look at the new feature conditional logic, or as it's now being called elements conditions inside Bricks 1.54. If you haven't already updated, update to the latest version, which is the latest as of September the 28th, 2022. So the main thing that's been added into this is that conditional option. So let's go ahead and take a look. Links to everything will be in the description. Let's hop over into a page I've created, and what I've done is I've set up a couple of different sections on here just so I can demonstrate some of the basics of what you can do using these conditions. So for example, let's grab this advert right at the top. We'll make sure that's the selected section. We'll come over into the left-hand side, and you can see we get this new option called conditions. Click to open that up. We can now go ahead, either learn more about the condition, which I would recommend if you're new to this, However, we can just simply go ahead and add our first condition in, and we can stack conditions on top of each other. We're not limited to just a single condition. Let's click Add. Now we can go ahead and build our condition up. So the first thing we're going to do is select the condition, and inside here we can now choose what type of condition it's going to be. And obviously this is going to depend upon the types of tools and plugins you may have installed. You may see more or less if you have various different plugins. For example, WooCommerce. So what we can do with this is we can say, well, let's make sure this only shows up after a specific date. This could be an advert we want to place that becomes applicable later on down the line, or something that only actually lasts a certain amount of time. So to do that, we could just come in and just choose an option for date and time. You can see inside here, we have weekday, date, and time. So for example, let's just say we'll choose date. So we can now use the operator that we want to actually check the condition. So for example, you can see we've got is equal to, is not equal to, is greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than or greater than. So the key options that we need are inside here. So what we can do is we can say that the date is greater than or equal to, and then we can choose up the date picker and we can say it's greater than yesterday. So we'll click on that and we've now set up our first condition. So there's something really simple. If you want to add additional conditions, you can click on the plus. And now we can set a different condition. And you can see this is choosing the AND operator. So we can now come in and set something up. So we could say that this is only going to be available now for people that are actually logged in. So we can say user login is or is not. So you can see a different operator. And we'll say logged in. So we're checking now basically two conditions. We're saying that the date is greater than or equal to yesterday in this example. And the user is logged in. So let's take a look how this all works on the front end. Let's save our page. Let's go ahead and test this out. So looking at the front end, I'm already logged in and the date is greater than yesterday and I see the advert. But let's go and open up an incognito window where obviously I won't be logged in. And let's just drop the same link in there and refresh. And there you go. We don't see that advert. Once I log in and the date is checked, then I would see it. So it's a really simple way of working, but you could use this to create quite comprehensive and complex advertising campaigns. Or if you want to set things up for limiting or restricting content to only logged in users to kind of force registration, there's a million of different options of why you may want to use this. Now, that's a really simple example using two different conditions. Now let's use this to actually check something and then hide and display various different items on our page. So let's get rid of these. All we need to do is click on the little delete condition, delete condition, and we've got where those conditions apply to that advert. Now you can see underneath, I've got this notification in its own container, and I've also got this loop that we've got for, in this example, job roles or whatever you kind of want. So we've got two separate entities inside here. So the first thing I want to do is set up a condition for this first one to check to see if the user's logged in, and if they are, they won't show this, and then we want to set the same condition, but in reverse for the content underneath. So we say, if you're not logged in, show this warning. If you are logged in, hide the warning, show the content. Great if you've got kind of, you know, sites that require registration or you want to just limit things to paying customers, whatever you want. So with our notification selected, let's come over to the left-hand side and we're going to go ahead and add our condition in. So let's click to add, open this up. We're going to bypass the post ID, but you can see underneath we've got various different options for the user. So we can check user login, for example, and then we can check is or is not. We can come back out. We can just choose something else. We can say user ID. You might want to limit this to a specific user ID. You can check if the user's registered information, whether they registered before or after a specific date. So you might want to have a reminder that they, something is due to be renewed, you know, whatever you kind of want there. For this example, though, all we want to do is set user registered. However, if you were using a plugin that allow you to create different user roles and you may have a new tier called 
customer or client or subscriber or whatever you want, you can use the user role option to check against that. So you could very easily combine this with a payment option that then tags a user role and then you can tie this into here. Pretty cool. Let's just say that you want the option for user login and is, and we say logged out. So basically, this is going to show if the user's logged out. So let's go ahead and test that first of all, make sure that everything is set up correctly. We'll save this. We'll come back to our test page, and you see where I'm logged in, I don't see it. Open up that incognito window one more time, and you can see now where I'm logged out, I do see it. So now we need to do the reverse for our content underneath. So let's do that. Come back into Bricks, and we're going to add the condition now to the loop container. So we'll select the loop container, click on plus, Open the conditions up, scroll down until we get the option for user login, and we say is logged in. Hit save, go back, test this where we're logged in, we'll refresh, and you can see we see everything we want, excluding that error message. And again, one more time, let's go over to the incognito window and test inside there. Now, as you can see, we get the warning message but we don't see anything underneath it. So it's a very simple way of working, but we can build this up. And like I say, you can stack these on top of each other. So you could also do things like check that the user role is being selected. So for example, we come back in, go to our conditions, and we say loop container, make sure that's selected. We'll add another condition, and we'll say that the user role is equal to, and we'll say that we want something like subscriber. So now we're just checking to make sure that the user's logged in, and that they have a user role of subscriber. And you can stack more and more and more of these if you want to. So it's very, very simple and straightforward to start to build these up. But like I say, you do have an awful lot of options inside you that may seem, first of all, quite limiting, but once you actually start to see how you can reference things like dynamic data, browser information, referrer URLs. So you may be referring from an advert and that referrer URL comes over and then you show them something specific. Whereas anybody that doesn't have that referrer URL will not see that item. There's a million different use cases. Now, if you work with any kind of conditional logic in any tools or anything like databases and so on, you'll know there are kind of two conditions. You've got an and condition where all the conditions have to kind of meet together. They're kind of grouped into one. So like we have at the moment, the user is logged in and the user role is subscriber. But there are times where you may want to use the alternative condition, which is an or condition. So you could say that this or this condition is met. So it gives you more flexibility to look at various different conditions. You may even want to go one step further and combine a combination of a couple of and conditions like we have on top of an or condition. So all these or all these conditions have to be met. I know it probably sounds a little confusing, but the logic, once you kind of understand it, is not that difficult. So let's take a look at how we'd actually go about adding in an or condition instead of an and condition. Now you may think where we've got these two conditions and they're joined together with this and in the middle, that all we need to do is kind of click on that and we could change it. Well, you can't, it doesn't work in that way. There's two ways in which you interact with the conditions in Bricks. First of all, if you want to add another condition to the and condition, so in other words, we want to add a third step to this, so all three of these have to be met, we click on the plus on any of the existing conditions. So for example, we click on that, that adds in a new third condition and is tied in with the and conditions. So in other words, this one and this one and the third one all have to be met. However, you may want to use an or condition. To do that, instead of clicking on any of the conditions you've already created, you come back up to the top and you click on the actual master add condition. Once we do that, you'll see now that gives us a separator line and it uses the or. So if we take a look at the first two, they're joined together. Whereas you take a look at the or, it's separated. So now if we go ahead and create our next condition with whatever we want, what's gonna happen is to show or hide this particular element is gonna be a case of if this condition or these conditions are met, or this new condition is met. I hope that makes sense. Like I say, it may sound a little confusing, but once you have a sort of like a use case in your mind, you'll see where an and or an or actually makes more sense. And that's basically how easy it is to go ahead and add these ands or or conditions in. But as always, the way that Bricks have implemented this into the actual setup itself is incredibly simple and straightforward. This is the first iteration, so I do expect this to expand as more use cases come on board, as we get more feedback from users requesting various different conditions to be checked. But all in all, I think it's a pretty positive start to conditional logic inside Bricks 1.54. But as always, let me know your thoughts. 
Is this something that would make you switch over? Are you already using Bricks? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.